are watching Property TV. Hello and welcome to Property Summits, the only show you need to put you firmly in the know when it comes to the latest developments in the property world. From six of the most experienced people in the business. First off, best-selling author and serial entrepreneur Paul Mahoney, founder of Nova Financial Group, providing property investment advice with a particular focus on the buy-to-let sector. And joining me is Nicholas Warwick, an investor and developer who makes the most of his expertise in his role as CEO of the world's largest international property forum. We also have John Howard, someone who knows a thing or two about property, having bought and sold a staggering 3,500 houses, apartments and developments in his career. Tony Gimple is here too, the man in the know when it comes to tax, accountancy, finance or succession planning. Also joining me is Richard Bush, founder of the crowdfunding platform Crowdlords, which provides more people with the opportunity to invest in property. And last but not least is our newest member of the Property Summits team, Ranjan Bhattacharya, a man who's been investing and developing property for 30 years and uses that experience as the country's leading educator of property entrepreneurs. Well, lovely to see you all, gentlemen. Thank you. So one thing we know for sure is that inflation is on the up. Paul, what is that going to mean for property developers, good or bad? Well, property developers versus property investors, I think it means two different things for them. Um, you know, I think for the common man, property, sorry, inflation is a bad thing. You know, costs of living going up when a lot of people are already struggling, that's not a positive thing for for your average and we're person. all feeling it, aren't we? We're all feeling the, the extra cost, you know, especially with fuel prices have significantly risen and every, most people use fuel. Um, but for property investors, for you know, someone like myself who's got millions of pounds worth of debt, it's not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> um, you know, property prices are generally rising in high inflationary markets and that's, that's evident at the moment. Property prices are rising much higher than they have for quite some time in line with inflation or somewhat in line with inflation. Um, and if you think about it, if we've got 10% inflation per annum and you've got a million pounds debt, well, at the end of that year, you've got 100 grand less debt in, in real terms. Yeah. So, so that's not necessarily a bad thing for, for people who have you know, appreciating assets and debt attached to those assets. So that makes sense. So it actually weighing it all up, but it'd be good news if you're an investor. What about if you were thinking of getting into the business and developing you, you developing a, a, an old building like this, for example? Well, yeah, I suppose one of the downsides, if you're looking at developing, is the increase in, in build costs. Because, you know, inflation being a basket of goods, and I think that's why inflation is so hard to quantify, is because regardless of who says you know, what inflation is, it's all about what basket of goods you use. Um, and and if, you're a, if you're a developer, your basket of goods is probably very different to, you know, the person who works at Tesco's down the road. Um, their basket of goods is very different to, 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 to you. So, so, yeah, for a developer, obviously, costs of, of developing, you know, the building costs have, have gone up substantially, which makes developing more difficult, makes making profit more difficult. And I've already seen some developers trying to pass those costs on, you know, increasing the, the property prices due to, um, you know, halfway through developments, for example, due to the increase in building costs. But can you do you, that? Surely you if you've written a deal, you, your deal's your deal, isn't it? Well, no, no, no. So if you've already exchanged on, on a purchase, then of course yeah, you can't, yeah. they can't increase the prices on you. But if they've sold half the development, right. there's, there's nothing stopping them increasing the prices on the balance. Yeah. And I have seen some developers doing that over the past couple of months. You can only do that to a certain extent though, because you're competing with the market and you know, you, if, you, you've, if you've got a development around the corner that was completed six months ago, great. If the prices there are increasing, then you can increase your properties in line with that. But if they're not necessarily, then, then you can't really. So, you know, there, there are challenges as well. There is a time issue, though, for developers, and you'll know this, John, is that when the cost of materials or cost of people go up during the development, your lending is already fixed. So the, the lender would have said to you, okay, I'll, I'll lend you 70% of the value. And they judge the value on the valuation that was done at the beginning. So they'll have a ceiling on how much they'll lend you. 
but your costs have gone up and suddenly you run out of money. And so you need to borrow money from somewhere else to fill that gap. And that's, that's a real issue because, you know, yeah. many people won't, won't lend that extra money that you need to fin finish the development. Yeah, I think, I think what's happened certainly last year uh, and so to an extent this year so far is that any increases in bill costs have been masked by the fact that the property prices have gone up. The question I have for you, Paul, really, is do you think that um, property prices will go up with inflation? Well, if, if you look at the past 12 months where inflation has started to rise, they have. Yep. You could argue they have. They have Whether yeah. the two are aligned, and that's why property prices are going up, who knows? But, but property price growth has been higher than inflation over the past yep. 12 months. Yep. Whether that continues in the same direction or not is a difficult thing to predict, I think, because there is, of course, at some level, an affordability issue as well. Supply and demand. Because By the way, the, the topic, we're talking about inflation, and we've got to look at what inflation actually is. And headline inflation is far short of real inflation. And Paul, you rightly mentioned the basket of goods, but what a lot of people don't know is that a loaf of bread, you know, a loaf of bread today has a few less slices, but the loaf of bread is counted. And they've, they've done subtle things, like they, they swapped out brown bread for white bread, which is cheaper. So what hasn't stayed the same is the basket of goods that they use to measure inflation over time. That has changed and and it's yeah. actually a lot higher. And that's the retail price index, which has about 300 items in it. Sometimes, some, uh, sometimes they take things out and uh, they put and they replace them with other things. Mm -hmm. But I mean, unless you're buying t televisions every week, um, which have come down substantially, I think the tele my first television I bought for my own house was probably more 40 odd years ago than it, than it is now. But if you take those things, and it was black and white as well. And it was black and white. Very funny. Very funny. It was deeper than it was white. I think Tony's was Tony. It was very deep. Tony's, I think, was was, was black and white probably. But yeah. But so you know, they've replaced those cert certain items in order to to manipulate the situation. I agree yeah. with you entirely. Yeah. And the real the real level of inflation probably is double double what they quote. I'd When's say, that going to hit home though? I think that's the question yeah. that no one really knows. When's that effect going to kick in where people do realise that? Third quarter. Third do, you mean, quarter. do you mean as consumers or as...? As general consumers, I think, yeah, because like, you know, Ranja mentioned, uh, there's there's interesting news in the press about chocolate bars getting smaller and all this stuff where they well, are that's probably good messing. For, that's probably good for the economy, uh, <laughs> yeah. good for the uh, society. Yeah, it's good for my kids, you know. Yeah, good for um, the society. But yeah, it's that kind of... Um, glossing over of the, the, the truth, really. The where, point where still that, one of the points that uh, Paul mentioned, which is absolutely spot on, is the, is the effect of inflation on people that have a lot of debt. So that's great for the long term. Yeah. But in the short term, it's very important to look at um, servicing and also cash flow. Uh, to have a strategy to increase your cash flow. Because yeah. it's one thing to moan about costs and energy prices, which is not much you can do about. So the other way of doing that in the short term, so the, the de inflationary effect of debt is great in the long term, but you've got to survive the short term to make it to the long term, and that's about making some cash flow in the short term. And what, what's interesting is the market seems to be going with over, you know, I call it over-regulation almost of, of the property market. It's pushing people more into rented, but then rents are increasing as well. So are we just exaggerating the problem of homelessness and people actually getting on the ladder from a purchasing perspective and even potentially a rental perspective mm. in a few years' time. Where are we heading in five years' time, ten years' time? Well, nobody in this country has to be homeless unless made intentionally homeless by themselves. So they will find a home for them. So hopefully that, that, that will remain the case. I'm sure it will. I, I just think with this inflation, for me, it's in a very unusual situation to have such high inflation and the economy doing Do well, so. but as worrying <coughs> about interest rates going up and all the rest of it at the same time. It's a very unusual mix. And I think if anyone's being really honest, um, I don't think we'll know the full effects until the third or fourth quarter of the year, um, potentially. You can only talk about what we think might happen, Absolutely, I suppose. Absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> and I suppose, yeah. you know, from, from my, the way I look at it is, I have assets that are appreciating in value, yep. which is great. You know, if they've everyone's saying they've increased by double digits over the past year which is fantastic which i'm sure they have yeah you know, that that is of far more benefit to me than an extra 50 quid per petrol tank 
that I'm having to patch right now. Now, but, I can understand that that's very difficult yeah. for a lot of people, and, and I'm not saying that it's not, but I suppose from the perspective of a property investor who, yeah. who has worked hard in the past to yeah. build a portfolio, <clears throat> yeah. it's actually not a bad thing at this point in time. No, in, in the point of your career, at, the, at this stage of your, your career, I'm sure it's not. The problem I think is going to be uh, the, you know, the, the lack of confidence in the market. And once there's a lack of confidence in a property market, and you know, Richard, you're and Tony and Aranja, and we are old enough to have seen this on many occasions, you know, two or three occasions at least, yeah. well, what can happen? Uh, and once it starts to slide, it can really slide. It's whether inflation stops it sliding, in my view, uh, and which is, and we can only normally learn learn uh, about the from the past, what's happened in the past. But this is quite a unique situation, Ranjan, isn't it? But you're saying something which is actually alludes to the opportunity for property investors. Because sure. that sentiment is pretty much the homeowner. Yeah, the homeowner, agree. the largest yep. decision in their life is what property, uh, what home yes. to buy. But when we're, and, and I think you mentioned in a previous episode, how counter-cyclic it is. When people stop buying, yep. they start renting. Yep. So this is the time for um, savvy property investors to get clued up and to invest in assets that mm -hmm. produce an income, surplus mm -hmm. to the cost of carrying them. Yeah. That allows you to outpace the issues, short-term effects yeah. of inflation. Yeah. And it's the and safest some, type of investment, the obviously. Bill. And yeah. we've all done yeah. them. When, it, when anyone talks about how they've made money in a recession, that's ultimately what they've done. You talk about the savvy investor. Do you have to be the brave investor as well, though? If it's something, you know, you've got lots of experience and you're brave and you know that you'll ride the storm, but if you haven't got that experience, no. have you got to be brave? Bravery just comes from having educating yourself and having the knowledge mm. that gives you the confidence to take the steps because no one's going to jump off a cliff you know unless they know they're going to survive or what's underneath it's about knowing that you're not jumping off the cliff because you've educated yourself as to what that step and that's all about de-risking i mean i talk a lot about you know de-risking deals before you buy them so you know check out what's it going to cost to do what you know what are you what's your return going to be how many how, you know what what can you rent it for they sound simple things but i can tell you the amount of people that don't check anything and just blindly you know sign on the dotted line well i think there are two key points there one is a find your buyer before you even start in the first place because if you know where the property is going to be sold or rented, rented to yeah. you've got a degree of certainty and obviously the, your due deal on, on, on them and secondly and we've all seen this you know in in the trade press and generally it's stop doing it by accident and have the right team yes, with the point, right experience good point. Yep. You know, around you who aren't going to sell you something just because they can, who aren't going to suck you into a training course just because they can. No. You know, it's about you, know, you finding them, you know, them finding you, and if they're not doing it for the right reasons or they cannot make a go of it, say no. No, I'm not going to take your money because never in a million years are you going to be able to make this work for you as an individual. You are watching Property TV. You are watching Property TV. I think it's also important to keep in mind what's causing inflation at the moment. You know, if we go back to 2008, 2009, it was caused by an overheating market. The economy was absolutely booming and therefore inflation went up. The economy is not absolutely booming no, at the moment. It's, it's, not. it's caused by a shortage. Yep. We've got a shortage of pretty much everything and major logistical problems due to COVID. So the, the reason for inflation at the moment is very, very different for the reasons in the past. So it be interesting to see how that plays out. Well, the government is saying that it's short term. They're banging on about short term, short term. But I, I spoke to a, a government minister uh, a few weeks ago um, who said to me, privately that um they not can... private anymore john <laughs> yeah. well it, it is private because i'm not going to say who it is. i'm not going to say who they are okay. so it's okay. private but th their view was they couldn't put interest interest rates up to more than two percent this year and that would not be enough to control the inflation because it's a worldwide problem and that is a major problem for any government but keeping in mind if we are actually talking about inflation being caused by shortages that are mm. short to medium term let's say yeah and those shortages will end at some point in the future when things get back to normal. Do we need interest rates to rise for inflation to come down? Potentially not. Yeah. And yeah. with the government, you know, and well, their the main policy being, so. at the, yeah, a little, little bit, bit, a little bit, yeah. you know, little increments. But if the, one of the main policies of government being increasing home ownership, 
increasing rates decreases home ownership. So yeah. it, you know, it, it conflicts with one of their main policies. One of the things you mentioned, Paul, there is this unique circumstance. It's different from 2008, 2009. Mm. And what you're basically describing, no growth and inflation, is stagflation. Now, I, I mean, I was just in nappies at the time, but John, you might remember the last time this happened in the 70s. <laughs> Thanks. I think Tony like might have done And Richard. But don't, like why why really bully that. me? There's Richard and Tony here as well. <laughs> but, uh, we haven't experienced that set of circumstances for a long, long time. And it's not, it's not, it's not great no. for people no. without assets. No, I agree. Supported by debt. If you have assets, support, income producing assets supported yeah. by debt, that is a... That is a ticket to ride through a period of stagflation, which for everyone else is not great. It is, Ranjan, but the difficulty is it's hard to encourage people uh, to get on the property ladder when there's so much uncertainty and yeah. worry. Yeah. Because the average, I, say, I hate to use this uh, average person, there's nobody average in this country, everyone's, everyone's individual. But it, it, you know, it, it causes um, anxiety and worry. And if there's a, if there, you know, husband and wife or partners, life partners, I believe is the term people use these days. Um, uh, you know, one of them is, is more ballsy than the other one. The one who's, who's cautious has got a, a very good argument at the moment to say, look, we don't want to do anything quite yet. We just want to wait. And that's, and that's the problem because it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's a snowball effect. Market sentiment, yeah. It's market sentiment, oh. thank you. I'm, I know I'm that with, with um, oh, sorry. Tom, sorry no. I was going to say, people do have selective short-term memories. Mm. Uh, turn, Turn the clock back, you know, and I don't think any of us were alive during this period, but you had Spanish flu, which was the COVID of its day, yep. followed by a war. Followed by the Roaring Twenties. Followed by the Roaring Twenties, which yep. was probably fun. Yep. Um, and then, you know, in, when, when we had the oil crisis, and then when we left the ERM. Had the Depression. You've got, every, you know, wherever we are now, History has already mm. been with I agree. Western economies. So are we going to have the Roaring Twenties take two? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're all talking, well, we're all being quite Paul negative today, quite aren't we? 100 years later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, Paul, you go down very well, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're all being quite doom and gloom to, on this particular yeah. topic, but I think it's a the economy topic, is, Nicholas. it is a serious, a serious topic. topic. It's topic. important to drill down to yeah. what's important. But, you know, Tony's intimated there that, you know, we are potentially coming into a really good period as well. And, and as Paul said, Maybe it's a little blip in inflation because of you know the issues with materials and Brexit and wars and microeconomic. I read an article the other day factors. that might worry some of us, and the article basically said that after a spate of inflation comes recession. Well, yes, but that, that's that's because as it did in the twenties. That's, that's because counteractions fine, against yeah. a booming economy causes an inflation. You know, significantly high interest rates to make, to bring down inflation yeah. causes a recession. We're not like there. Like it did in 08 or 09. We're not there at the moment. So I, well, we weren't there in 08 or 09. We were there in 07. We were there in 08 or 09. Interest rates have never been as, you know, even if they go up uh, more this year, it's peanuts compared to, Tony, I don't want to bang on about no, it. No, you, no. me and Richard. Yeah. Uh, and Ranjan to a point, but only to yeah. younger than us. Can you but start I mean, with Ranjan? How much was time? your interest on your first house purchase? What was the interest you were paying you on a house? On, on my first house, yeah. interest was probably three or four percent, and then, and then we, it went up to what? 15, 16 15 percent. That's the early so what you're saying is, is when we came out the ERM. Well, yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying is, done. you know, the it's average. What I'm saying is the average interest rate for people owning their own home, buying their own home through a building society, until the last 15 years was about 10, 11% a year. So why is everyone so worried about rates rising? No, hang on, rates have only risen. The rates have risen recently, but they're still just back Tiny. up to what they were Tiny. pre-COVID. Exactly. Fractions of them. It's the same as what they were pre-COVID. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so it's fractions. So um, people used to spend a lot more money on a mortgage compared to living. And yeah. that's what we, potentially we could get back to with the cost of um, everything increasing. They've got less money to go out for dinner, less money to buy coffees, less money to go on holiday, and that's the problem. But that's they've also the had, they've also saved up a ton of money from being in COVID for two years, not going on well, holidays. Very few people ever save money these days. It used well, to happen years ago. John, in the last two years, well, every, maybe so some they haven't been able maybe, to spend it. Maybe yeah. some have, maybe yeah. some have, <clears throat> maybe yeah. some have. Look, look, look where we started the day off, you know, a, a new paradigm. Just about everybody you, you talk, talk to or talk with about the environment, about inflation, about the very recent past, 
who are suddenly focused on really what's important to them, which is you know being close to home, sure. not over leveraging. And it won't be, I mean, every generation or so, there is this major change in outlook. And I think that's what we're going through at the moment. Tony, I think you're being a bit naive with, with respect. I think that's, you know, that's all, there's always that sentiment. But whether people behave in that way or not, I don't think. History tells us that, that that's not how. They have short term memories. They, I think they, do, yeah. they do think it's like how that. It's how we'd like to be seen. Lose that to be behaving, quite but quickly. it's not how we behave as a society. Because they have to put themselves first and yeah. put food on the table and the roof over well, their heads. We're selfish beings. Yeah, absolutely. It's it, it, it's just part of being a a naked ape and a, you know an, an, another part of nature. You can't help it. It's what we do, you know, as a species. The fact that we've got opposable thumbs, big brains, and the ability to look and say, "How the hell did I get here?" Uh, and the rest. I've never, never felt, felt like a naked ape I'm in the field <laughs> looking up at the sky, I'm not Tony. Quite I don't sure know about that you. Has to do with inflation, Tony. But no, no, no. You know, let's get back to the, the it, point. It, it, um, listen, I, I think we're, we're in, 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 history does repeat itself, and there's two groups of people here really. There's the sort of general public that looks at property for their own home, yeah. and then there's yes. the property investor. I agree. And if we look at the property investor, the key issues right now, I believe, are first of all making sure that you have a reasonable cash buffer. Yes. Uh, you'll need a, more cash reserves than before. But at the end of the day, if you can secure debt and fix the cost of that borrowing for a reasonable length of time, and in the knowledge that the cash flow, the monthly cash flow that you're going to make on that property is a certain amount is going to stay stable over the four or five years, and you fix your debt for four or five years, there's enough time to ride through this stage of the cycle. Yes. And from his history, if you follow that strategy, you'll always come out the other also end. Also keeping well. in mind that anybody who has remortgaged in the past five years has been stress tested at a bench rate of five and a half percent. Yes. So Good even point. even if they're borrowing yes. at two or three percent at the moment, mm -hmm. there is a two, two and a half percent buffer there yeah. for for rates to rise and they can still afford that and more than break even. Otherwise the bank wouldn't lend them money. And, and don't panic. And don't panic and don't worry. Absolutely. And you know, inflation has an, has had an effect. It depends on markets, but you know, during COVID Residential rents went down a little bit, of course. Um, there was occupancy issues in some areas, but they've bounced back and they're pushing ahead now. You know, we are implementing our Section 13, the, you know, the notices for annual rent reviews now, and they're, they're being accepted. People aren't moving out. So rents are going up. So what inflation will do is mean that your debt will be frozen if you've got a fixed rate, but your rent should increase in time as well mm. yes. because yes, of the point. inflationary good effect. Good point. Well, the, 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 <coughs> perhaps it's more immediate for developers than it is for property investors. Yeah, yeah they're selfish, this lot, aren't they? Well, I mean, what about yeah. poor old developers? Yeah. I mean, uh, Nicholas, me, you know, Ranjan to a point, you know. Well, um, that, I, I, th I think there's a key difference, and it's in language. Mm. Yeah? Pretty much all of us here are running professional property businesses. Yes, that's yes. true, Tony. Yes. Yeah, and whether that's as landlords, whether that's as developers, but this word, property investors mm. keeps creeping in. Mm. Yeah. So if, if, if you're going to do it, developer, landlord, whatever. Be professional. Be professional. Be do it the best possible you can, high standard. Mm. Talk to the people who do, do it for a living like, as businesses. I, I agree. And I think you just need to be a l more cautious than you, than you yeah. have been because you, we don't quite know where. Uh, and, and look at us all here today. We've all got slightly different opinions. We're all saying be cautious though, aren't we? That's the yes. one thing that comes out of this. I think is that we're all saying be cautious. Yes, inflation's going to have an effect. It might be good for Paul, he's smiling about it. For others, it may not be so good. <laughs> well, there you go. That's a good point to stop. So caution, make sure you're not caught out. Thank you ever so much, gentlemen. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>